Hello there and welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series for beginners of Dwarf Fortress. I'm Icon and today we're going to go deeper into the first steps of our military setup. And the other thing that I wanted to tackle was to build a well. <clears throat> all in all, we could have done that a while ago, but uh, I, I somehow noticed that this was something uh, that somehow eluded me. We're going to fix that in real quick because I think that's something many people would like to know how it works. So, first things first, we're going to set up ourselves down here where we want them, our barracks. So, this doesn't do anything in, its, in the first place, but it's already nice to have a spot designated to that. So, the barracks will be the area where your dwarfs for the military will live at. They will be here every day, every day, uh, every night. That's because, well, ideally your military squad lives in here. That's why we put in some beds. There we go. So, additionally, just like with every bedroom, we require chests, and that's that. So. The next thing we're going to go on over is we're going to prepare equipment for our soldiers. The thing is, right now we don't have enough dwarfs in our in our fortress to to afford ourselves a military. Because military does uh, require, like I already mentioned, that a couple of your dwarfs will do basically nothing else than fighting anymore because you want the, to keep them as effective as possible, basically. So we're getting over to our metalsmith's forge and what we're doing here we're going to prepare the gear for our soldiers in the meantime that's a pretty good thing to do so we got iron quite available by now you can get into your stocks and uh, check out your bars and uh, in this scenario we're pretty well stacked when it comes down to iron bars we have a nice um, stockpile of coke as well so here things get quite finicky. I'll attach the work orders for this one to this anvil because I like it like that. So first off, I always will type in iron here. So now we have to check out, we have to select one suit of gear for our entire, for the entire squad. So first off, we're going to craft iron breastplates. And now we're going to do this just like we do it every time. So if there's less than one iron black breastplate, make one. You can, of course, attach that as a uh, global work order too. So I'm going to uh, fetch up those work orders uh, real quick behind the camera and then summarize what we're looking for. All right, there we go. So I have now automated a production of breastplates, bucklers, gauntlets, high boots and leggings. The only thing that I missed here were helmets. So let's add these as well. And all in all, you got to whoopsie, um, make sure that you have every slot filled and your dwarfs basically have seven slots for gear. One for the weapon, one for the shield, one for the helmet, one for the breastplate, one for their hands, one for their legs, and one for their feet. Makes a total of seven slots. That's what your standard melee issue dwarf wants to wear. In this tutorial, I won't be touching marksmen or marks dwarfs because these are a bit of a different topic and this would convolute and bloat this episode. So with that kind of setup, Next day, starting, our forge will run crazy and these items will be produced. At this point, I usually designate a new worker, uh, a, a new worker detail because I really think that smithing should be not done by everybody. So we're going to get on over there and scroll downwards towards metal smithing so i'm now creating a job uh, area that's all about all the smithing item uh, smithing things except for furnace operating i don't care about that too much that's uh, the thing is the furnace operation does not influence the quality of the metal 
Everything else does influence the quality and therefore is important. We already have two people there, so we're going to assign them to these jobs. Or wait a sec, we're going to make that like this. We have one skilled weaponsmith and we have one talented blacksmith. So the the earliest items will be utter crap. That's that's pretty normal. So therefore we should better we should better prepare ourselves for for some rather unpleasant items for a while. But with these preparations, our smithy will start churning out weapons for us to get her get her militia a head start. So before we get on deeper into that topic, here now quickly the thing about wells. So a well. Oh, we have a. Uh... We have our first position. Not oh, great. <laughs> so, a well requires mechanical parts. Um, whenever that happens, what you heard there, one of your dwarfs wants to create an artifact. So our expedition leader has now has now retreated himself with a bit of mudstone into that, and let's just hope he's going to be successful. Sometimes you... You can't... First of all, you can't control when and uh, what happens there. And uh, at the end, they will always uh, churn out an artifact, or if they are not successful, they'll become... Well, the last one I had become insane. He died from dehydration. Sometimes they throw a tantrum. This can be quite dangerous, all in all. So let's just hope for our best. Anyways, I wanted to uh, build down a well. So first off, we we've made the mechanics at the mechanics workshop here. Mechanisms. That's what we require. Then the next thing we require is water. We require a tile that has water. So since I've already seen that there was a lot of aquifer going on here, same goes here. So we're going to do as follows. First off, I'm going to dig myself down here. I know that this is now an aquifer region, but that's exactly what we want. So we're digging out a couple of tiles here now. And uh, we have to repeat that because the old uh, mining jobs got deleted because aquifer, of course, they're doing this right. So what happens to this area now is that it will slowly fill itself with water. And that's exactly what we want. So the next thing we do is we dig a channel in here so we can smash the floor. All right, so now we have a hole in the floor. The next thing we do is we set up a piece of floor above that uh, piece of uh, stairs. So we're sealing the stairs. I don't want anybody to get on over there. And now what will happen is that this little thing here will fill slowly with water. And that's what our well will need. So now we can place the well on top of that hole. We require some wood some bucket, some rope, and some mechanics. The value of each of these parts determines the value of the well in general. So the more valuable parts you put into the well, the more valuable the uh, well in the total gets. Why is a well so important when your dwarfs only drink booze, you might ask yourself? Well, water is important for several things. First off, your dwarves wash themselves with water. Right now the well is still dry, but as soon as the uh, fields here reach a level of three, this will stop. So your dwarves fill, uh, will wash with uh, water. That's important, you know, hygiene. What's wrong about hygiene? And the other thing is when your dwarves are wounded, they won't drink any booze. And that's where things get really, really important. So your wounded dwarves will die without a well, because they will, they, they won't be able to drink anything. So that's why I put the the construction of the well and the military setup in the same episode because I felt like they belong together. As you see here, our metalsmith is now crafting that iron gear we were waiting for. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a militia commander. No, no militia, no squads, no nothing without a militia commander. So we're going to assign one of our dudes to that. 
and the militia commander comes with no further requirements it's just uh it's just a person overseeing the entire uh, entire business there right on so that's uh, pretty much that part of the deal so it'll take a while until this cavern has been filled but a hole like that will provide enough water for your entire city problem without any issues because uh, they, they do really don't need that they don't really use up that much water but uh, what you could what you could consider in the long run would be to make that room a bit wider and put up some extra wells when too many people try to access the same well just as an idea Alrighty, so let's get down back to our barracks so here we got already pretty much the groundwork done there's two things you can install at a barracks that's always quite helpful and that's an armor stand and a weapon rack you find them both in furniture at the metalsmith's uh, workshop they aren't that terribly important but uh, they, they 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 won't hurt either they basically offer your barracks a slot to store their gear their their excess war gear in and uh, therefore it'll be a shorter way for your people to get their stuff basically that's all i personally think it looks nice and uh whoops select iron before looking for the weapon rack i think it looks nice and it makes and it gives a complete look to the barracks and also it's a useful storage furniture but it's not that not as important as the coffer and the, the bed in there so here it's uh, slowly going into operational because the cistern is filling and that's all that's all you need to do for a while it's really easy so we're going to set on up our last pieces of furniture you find them on the military tab as soon as they are built that is there we go and now we have to assign people to the military duty so we're going to go on here into the squad bar and uh, we're going to create ourselves our first squad so for now I'm going to select the um, uniform as metal armor and uh, the uniform is a different word for the kind of gear that your dwarfs will wear when they uh, when they go on duty so we want of course not only one guy in there so you click that dwarven face here and you assign another position and as we see there none of our dwarfs have any relevant skills so we just pick somebody who doesn't have a vital job here so far so for example don't pick up your planter like i said these guys they won't be doing anything else than military for the next uh, for the rest of their lives so there we go we have now two people and you can now press the check mark here and select the equip button and here we now see what kind of uh, gear they have assigned we, we see here metal armor has been designated so that's the uniform we selected let's get on over into the details so what the game now tries to provide is as you see here it always tries to look for an item which fits the description metal armor you can now also press the material button here and change that to iron armor so this way you can specify for what kind of gear your dudes should look for this is also really useful when later you will upgrade your stuff to uh, from iron to steel you can just go for something like that you just uh, go on in here and you check mark steel for example for the weapon it's pretty easy to leave an individual choice to the people and uh, then as you see there we have now these different colors red means the item isn't available in the fortress for the dwarf yellow means there is an item available but i'm not wearing it and ideally we click upgrade equipment that's uh, when they try to grab something and when everything goes as it should they have a green mark there and that's that so our job for now is to provide enough gear for our soldiers so when we check on out here the production is running check out your stocks check out the armor 
and uh, items that are looking like this with a double X in front of them, the object is mangled. Just uh, put them back into the smelter. They are of such low quality that your soldiers won't be using them. Your soldiers won't be using mangled or, or worn gear. Basically, if it has a double X marking in front of it, it's usually so bad that your people won't wear it. And the way I have configured my work orders would now stop any further armor from being produced because I my, my work order says, check if there's one breastplate available. If yes, produce none. It doesn't check if the breastplate's quality is good enough. So, if you ever have a, uh, if you if it ever comes to the point where you're like, there's n your work orders are stuck, it might be because of some crap shoddy item that's uh, blocking your stockpiles, and uh, this way you can't get rid of it. So you'll find armor items always in here. So you can also click them to uh, to minimize them. And whenever you find something that's uh, beyond abysmal, just destroy it. Just keep in mind that the shoes for your people are, or your, your soldiers are not found at the same tab here. So here, iron high boots, there we go. They, uh, they go into the footwear tab. And as you see here, this object is so showing somewhere that is not as bad as it will, uh, as it was before. But uh, we're going to smelt these in. The long story short is your 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 smiths have to get into uh, have to get into motion. They have to learn to cre create great things, and therefore the first few things often they, there's often quite a crappy uh, production in between. Just monitor it a little bit. And um, to finalize this thing here, well, right now they're not wearing anything. It does take a while, all right? So uh, you can also ch select your dude here and check out what they're wearing. As you see there, they're wearing not anything. This is because our production of armor and the things, it just takes a while until it kicks into motion. But uh, after a while, your military people will pick up their, uh, their gear and wear it. There's only one thing which is quite weird, and that's the, uh, that's the uh, footwear thing. So... Uh, I think my, uh, my dude with the artifact died. So, sorry, distractions of, of this game. So, here's one weird thing. Um, when you check this out here, your dwarfs are marked to wear the uniform over the clothing and exact matches only. So, that's the standard setup. And also, check out that nothing happened here. This is something that I really want to pinpoint. So, when you ever change anything in here set that up again because it happened to me so many many times all right you have to confirm your settings if you don't do that nothing of your change settings will be saved and another thing your dwarves won't wear their military boots over their non-military boots that's a bit of a problem and uh, whenever that happens you can just select here uniform replaces clothing but only select uniform replaces clothing when you're absolutely positive that you have an entire suit of gear for your dwarves because basically uh, otherwise you'll have to you'll have to face the fact that they won't wear anything basically they'd be donning their 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 shoes and, we, and they'd be not wearing anything. And if they, if they have to wear a breastplate, and they don't have a breastplate, they won't wear anything. And this uh, can even go so far that they will show up naked at their training. And that's the worst case. That's the very, very worst case. So, the next thing we have to set up is a schedule for our people. You click on there, and ideal for starters is just to put this on a constant training just click into the window and put them onto constant training the last thing we got to do now is we get to scroll on down here um slap down the armor stand no that's not so important 
weapon stand, I'm sorry. <coughs> the important thing is to click in there, and then you have that blue banner here. And now we get to designate which squad will use the barracks. The smooth shields, that's the one we've just set up. We designate that they should sleep, train, store their stuff, and store their squad stuff here as well. So that's that. What will happen now is that your folks will move on in. And as you see there, the first grids are going green. That's because the gear that we're producing is getting uh, is filling the slots. We surely will have to uh, pay attention here to uh, crap shoddy items for a while. That's just until our, our smiths get uh, get their job right. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And uh, henceforth, as soon as they have their stuff together, they're now going to go and train together and get better. And that's pretty much all you need to do in the first place. One big preview here. Down here you have the commands for your for your squad. Whenever this is checkmarked, you can command them. So assign a kill order, assign a station order. They will just stand there and guard patrols, defense, training, and so on and so forth. You can't do a lot of manual stuff there. So that's how you set up a melee squad. You could now at any time just uh, click on here into the squads click the dwarf face, and up to 10 people can be in one squad. And, uh, well, that's pretty much it for now. If you want them to use better weapons, just craft better weapons. One fun part is if you have assigned the um, equipment policy of individual choice, they gravitate towards the best weapon they can get. So if there's going to be an iron battle axe, They'll go for a bad. If the if they're wearing an, a, a uh, wielding an iron uh, battle axe right now and a steel battle axe will pop up, they'll grab that. So the only thing that's worth mentioning, which is kind of bad and uh, sometimes not uh, not wanted, is when you when your when your you know, when your axe dwarf all of a sudden decides to switch on over to a sword because there are different skill levels for a bad then you could just uh, configure it accordingly. Anywho, those are the basics and that will get you somewhere. Most importantly, I like to do this because it gives me the opportunity to have these guys trained for a very, very long time. You know, the earlier you set this up, the more time they'll have to train and grow kick ass. So another thing worth mentioning here, our, our poor dude hasn't uh, managed to make a uh, his, his artifact and he's now stricken by melancholy. So uh, he's basically going to die now. The last time I had this, this was a, was, this was a similar out outcome. The he's, he, he's now going to stop to drink and eat until he's dying. That's uh, what happens when they fail to do an artifact, and that's one of the milder outcomes. <coughs> the real problem here is when you check this uh, guy's relations, all these people here will be sad when he dies. And um, yeah, when, when people die like that, this can, be, uh, this can lead to a massive uh, spiral of doom. But in this scenario, it shouldn't kill off our fortress. And if so, it's going to be a fun way to go away. I don't think so, though. So, all in all, we have now set up ourselves a source of water. And if you check this out now, the cistern is now filled and the well is well full operational. That's personally a reason for me why I love to play in light aquifer regions, because breaching through the aquifer is uh, a joke of, uh, of a job, you know, it's that easy. And uh, at the same time, you get a free access to this. The other way, if you don't rock a, um, if you don't rock a, a, a light aquifer on your map, would be to use the river's water. You see there, you have one layer of water and you could now dig a channel and start diverting that water. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an impression what we can do there. So when you dig a channel, there you see it, the water is getting uh, moved on over there. And uh, basically, 
we could now go on over there and uh, start building a shaft downwards to our base and lead that water into our base. This way we could artificially create water streams. Just keep in mind that when you do it like that, you always go and, uh, well, you, you inherit whatever trouble the uh, river brings. Basically, if a monster would be swimming down that road and you'd be using this channel for your for your water supplies, that monster would have instant access to your well. Just a word of attention there. That's why another good reason why aquifers or light aquifers are so great, because they they always come without monsters. They, they are absolutely uh, foolproof in that regard because there's never ever going to spawn anything here just like that. All right, so I'm going to cut this episode at that point a little bit shorter. I'll leave the ways and means how you work with water to your own imagination. There's really a lot of things you can do. Just always keep in mind that once the water's in your base, you won't get rid of it that quickly. So, few things to know. Doors are waterproof, and uh, you can use floor grates. These uh, let water through, but no monsters. And you can use different uh, tiles here to block the water off. But the most effective way to block the water off is either a door or a wall. Just... Uh, Keep pay attention to not flooding your base because basically, if I'd be if I'd be doing the the digging job now like that, so just as an example, don't do that at home. If I'd be doing that, we'd be leading the the channel into the uh, into our base, and then it would flood our entire base. So, just so you know, quickly take that eraser so we don't spell doom to our place. All right, so thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. Feel free to ask away what kind of things you might want to know about the game in the future. And uh, feel free to leave a thumbs up and a subscription to the channel if you haven't done so already. It would be also really, really nice. There's a link to the playlist down below. So check this out if you want to watch the former episodes or just hook yourself up to a auto playlist and binge this. It's up to you. There's also links to support in this channel. There's Patre uh, Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me a Coffee as ways and means to support this channel. And a big thanks to all the supporters out there. I really, really appreciate it. So, see you guys next time, and have a good one.